Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host, Jinx, and we are joined, as always, by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Um, maybe we can switch the order around and uh, you can go straight into uh, your updates after we do a, a protocol update. And uh, I'll start off with uh, kicking into gateway updates. So, uh, Grove, y'all have any gateway updates this week? That's me. Uh, yeah. Um, do you want me to start with protocol updates, gateway updates? Where do you want to? I got them all. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. Perfect. I forgot that Shane uh, was not doing the protocol updates right now. Uh, cool. I'll just start from the top with protocol updates. So uh, alpha testnet number three is still under development, uh, making good headway. Uh, you can follow along with at the Shannon roadmap with a link that I will drop in um, the chat. Uh, stay tuned for an announcement next Friday on a hard date for alpha testnet number three. Um, so we're getting ready to announce that date. Um, yeah. I, I will keep rolling right in a Grove portal updates. Uh, as referenced last week, we have some new pricing going live on September 1st. So keep an eye out for that. Um, also, uh, more kind of tactical, we are preparing for Gandalf um, and working through rebalancing the Giga Stakes since the change for Gandalf affects both node slots to stake and Giga Stake slots to stake. We do have some Giga Stakes that are staked for more than eight chains. Um, but on our end, from an operations standpoint, we are going to move all of our Giga Stakes to be staked to one chain per Giga Stake. Um, and this might cause some fluctuation in network behavior while we're doing that. Um, we'll be doing it all at once, just biting the bullet and going right down to one right, at, right away, just so that it doesn't be a continuous operational burden. Um, at the same time, uh, we will be executing transfer stakes on all the Giga stakes. Um, so uh, for, for operational security purposes, we'll make sure that we've closed that gap once and for all. So that, that's what we've got on the gateway side. Um, and finally, I will bleed into path updates. Um, the path roadmap through the end of the year is live and launched. Um, and I will share a link to that again in the chat. Uh, the active version of the middleware, which will soon be path, uh, which we will be actively using and developing against in the portal, uh, will be live by the end of this month. So we are looking for a September 1st launch um, for path. We're very excited about that. Um, from there, all development will be out in the open. Uh, you can follow along with the roadmap. And uh, yeah, it'll be open and available to everybody. And it will be the same exact product that we use at Grove. That's all I got. Yeah. And I don't see anyone else from uh, the other gateways on right now. Are there any other gateways uh, updates from folks I'm missing here? I mean, I will say that uh, Pocket Scan has been given app stakes, so they're now a, uh, a full gateway. Nice. And uh, I know that Pocket Scan is also um, beta testing a new wallet right now, so hopefully uh, I'll have a chance to uh, play with that later this afternoon and report back. But it's nice to have some ongoing, uh, actually community driven uh, wallet options in the ecosystem node wallet of course being my prior my pri primary browser wallet in that case then uh let's go ahead and uh, shift over to was that so, someone yeah. talking sorry Jinx. yeah i'll just jump in because there are a couple oh, of other gateway updates from the community that i just want to share with everyone yep uh jorge you know pocket scan uh is a gateway now and they were actually spending their entire weekend tweaking their performance so just kind of shout out to them for putting so much effort into onboarding. Um, and one other gateway call out is that uh, the team at Grove, particularly Fred, has been providing a lot of support to Nodis. Uh, I think we all saw that some of the traffic went uh, off the network. Thank you, Nodis, for bringing it back on. Um, and part of that is them tweaking their infrastructure. Part of that is the support we've been providing call out to what Fred said in terms of making our path roadmap, pub, uh, roadmap public is we are hoping 
to start open sourcing uh, parts about of our quality of service so it is available to other people in the community. Uh, it'll be iterative, iterative, right? We won't just have an easy off the shelf, great documentation on day one, uh, but it will be coming in parts. That is kind of one of the things that we're cooking the scenes and trying to get out ASAP. Beautiful. It's, uh, I'm really happy to see a lot of uh, the movement towards uh, open sourcing in general and some greater collaboration as that's uh, it's been needed for a bit now. And on that note, I'll hand it over to Shane to talk about uh, Gandalf implementation and uh, the roadmap for that and uh, how to participate and uh, help get things buttoned up. Yeah, thanks, Jinx. Um, a few, uh, just another quick announcement. Um, yeah, there's actually quite a bit happening right now with launching uh, Pocket Multichain. So uh, we've been uh, working with uh, uh, working with uh, liquidity providers and uh, inside the community to line up enough to seed uh, several uh, new pools um, on Solana. Uh, base and on Ethereum. Uh, so, the uh, what what this is is it's a native pocket token versus a wrapped pocket token. Uh, and so I won't get into all the specifics around that, as there have been multiple posts on the forum that uh, talk about the the difference between like wrapped pocket on Ethereum and then just pocket on Ethereum and what the difference is there. And the, the pocket on Ethereum and the pocket on Solana and the pocket on base, that is uh, obviously the work of uh, Wojtek, uh, which he started uh, a few months back and, and PNF brought him on to, uh, to bring it through. And so we're now getting at the point where we're fully launching everything. Um, so anyways, a lot of cool things happening there. We're uh, hoping to launch uh, possibly this week, uh, a, a few of these chains and pools. So that'll be really cool. Uh, we're also working with DEXs that uh, could, um, that have basically built-in incentive models. So we can uh, create cool incentives for folks to provide liquidity uh, for a pocket on these new chains. So yeah, a lot of cool things actually happening on that front. And we're excited to get that all launched, uh, hopefully this week. So. Um, at least we got most of the technical stuff uh, worked out. We're now just coordinating directly with the DEXs themselves uh, and organizing with them. So that's kind of what's happening on that front, but really excited to, to have that. Um, really gives Pocket a lot more access to a lot more markets when we're on uh, Solana, uh, when we're on a Solana DEX, uh, the primary Solana DEX, and we're also on the primary uh, base DEX. Uh, while also, you know, still obviously being represented on Ethereum. So a lot of cool things. Um, and, and and with that, uh, we'll also be updating the documentation. That's kind of what I'm also focused on this week is going to be making this, putting this all into the documentation so folks can uh, utilize uh, the bridge that's been launched that allows you to go between all these different, uh, uh, all these different chains and, um, uh, you know, get, get, you know, find, find the liquidity pools and everything like that. So anywho, a lot of, a lot of changes kind of happening in the moment uh, on the multi-chain front, which is exciting. Quick question uh, on that, Shane. Yes. Are, those, are those values represented cumulatively under the same ticker when it comes to like uh, coin market cap and such? Yes, that uh, I, I've submitted uh, tickets to CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. CoinGecko was already approved. Uh, so if you go to our coin gecko, you'll actually see under uh, contracts, you'll now see uh, uh, a a uh, Ethereum contract and a uh, Solana contract. So, and, and the the Ethereum EVM is is across all chains. So, anyways, basically, yeah, under the normal regular pocket ticker, uh, which is an L1, uh, it also has these contracts as well. So. Pocket is now a L1 and uh, multi-contract, um, multi-chain uh, contract as well. So that's the benefit of, of going with the uh, kind of this this new standard of the uh, XERC20 versus going with a strictly wrapped version of a token. Um, it creates a lot more, uh, yeah, ability to have 
have, have things way more fluid between all these different chains to the point that we can just uh, keep everything under the same, uh, yeah, the same ticker. So everything will be under pocket. Wrap pocket will kind of be still its own thing. Um, and right now, wrap pocket is how you go from the L1 pocket to EVM, uh, but then, or to Ethereum specifically. But then if you want to go multi-chain, then you, uh, yeah, you you go basically from wrap pocket to these, uh, uh, to the pocket on Ethereum. Um, and once Shannon ships and, and you know, things, uh, uh, the, the bridge is rebuilt, uh, obviously we'll, we'll want to build everything so that we're using only the native pocket token um, on, on each of these chains uh, versus using the wrapped version. So, but the wrapped pocket token right now is, is, is the way that you go from pocket the L1 to uh, EVM and then from wrap pocket on uh, Ethereum, you can go into uh, wrap pocket or you can go to pocket on Ethereum. Uh, and then from there, you can go to any chain you want. So anyway, that's kind of what we're doing right now to just keep things, allow us to keep launching things without having to rebuild the bridge right now um, in a manner that would just be inefficient because uh, with Shannon is already coming a, a, a bridge rebuild anyway. So better to focus resources on uh, rebuilding the bridge then than doing something uh, doing something right now within Morse. So that's that's uh, kind of how the structure works. Well, thanks for that. And then on to Gandalf. Cool, cool. Yeah, so uh, so we put a date down. Uh, we put down the 19th uh, for transitioning from a max chains of 15 to our first phase, which is a max chains of eight. Um, that will, uh, for a lot of providers, it, it really won't change that much. Uh, Basically, the you know a few top providers probably will maintain uh, running more than fifteen chains or fifteen chains, uh, even though the max chains has fallen. But because they have so many more nodes, uh, they need to be able to have enough spread for their uh, uh, for their nodes. So likely, some large providers won't actually need to cut down on any of the amount of chains that they support. They would just need to distribute the uh, uh, their nodes across their chains in a slightly different manner. Um, but then uh, basically anyone that's not like one of the top two uh, or possibly three um, uh, providers, all of them would likely be able to dramatically cut the amount of chains that they need to run in general. So they could go down from uh, 15 to get network average down to eight. Um, and then with the next phase, uh, we'll go to three which that will be kind of a more dramatic, um, uh, well, I, I should say more substantial uh, change going from eight to three. Um, once you go eight to three, uh, there's no more uh, like money chains, meaning everyone's always staked on the same chain. So uh, all nodes will be essentially distributed or all providers um, will be distributed across multiple chains and not there's not any chain that all providers will all run and have all their nodes stake to. Um, so that's where the, the real effects of Gandalf are going to start uh, kicking in because then a lot of providers could literally go down to three chain nodes and still generate network average. Um, and then obviously one is the ultimate goal so that uh, we are at a place where anyone can join Pocket if they're a specialist in any uh, given chain and they don't need to run multiple other chains in order to uh, generate network average. They can just focus on whatever chain uh, they're already a specialist in. So one is the goal, but uh, that'll be phase three. Uh, but right now we're focused on phase two, which is happening uh, on the 19th. Uh, very, very glad to hear that uh, Grove is uh, figuring out kind of what, what this will look like uh, from an app stakes perspective, that's fantastic. Um, from a nodes uh, and node provider uh, perspective, I have released a spreadsheet that at least helps, could help people to uh, coordinate if they wanna coordinate. Um, I've, I had a number of people asking, hey, you know, is there a way that, you know, all providers can coordinate? Uh, I've had providers ask me that, 
and so I created a way that people could legitimately do that. They could coordinate. Um, and you could basically each provider can go there. I have all the the large providers kind of in uh, uh, in the spreadsheet. And if you're a smaller provider that's not on the spreadsheet, well, then, you know, there's not really a need for you to specifically coordinate, uh, you know, in, in kind of a larger way because you have less amount of nodes. Really, only the ones with large amounts of nodes are the ones that are going to really need to or would really benefit from from coordinating. Uh, and so what the spreadsheet does is you can basically just go down and you can fill it in. And actually, maybe I could just share a screen. But actually, I didn't think of that. Maybe I could just share a screen and kind of show in real time what this would look like. Yes, um, please. Yeah. Okay. Here, let me uh, let me do that. Um, uh, okay. Where do I have it? Um, okay, let me just go to the forum. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Pull this guy out. Close him. All right. Okay, sharing screen now. Let me know if you can see it. Yep, seeing it. Cool. Is the uh, text large enough for folks to be able to read? Probably would help if you zoomed in a little bit. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah. So this is a, a a spreadsheet that I made that helps uh, that can help people coordinate. Uh, what you have up here, uh, well, I'll just show using the example one. So what I have here is I have a column for a uh, certain provider. Uh, as, you, as you can see, each provider is represented here. Um, and then what what you basically have is there's, I've calculated basically a minimum amount of chains <laughs> that you should likely, uh, depending on how many nodes you are running, you should have this many chains. Um, and and kind of the reason that I I have this minimum chains calculated here is because especially as we keep lowering the amount of uh, uh, as max chains is constantly lowered, um, providers with more nodes still need to stay spread out across multiple chains. So uh, so minimum chains is basically what they would at least need to have uh, when max chains is down to uh, uh, when max chains is down to uh, one. So anyways, this is just a calculation. Obviously, everyone and their, you know, as a provider can figure out, you know, what they want their strategy to be. But at least mathematically speaking, um, if you have this many nodes, uh, 3,346 nodes, you should probably have at least 15 chains because all those 3,000 nodes are going to have to be distributed across multiple chains. Um, especially the closer we get down to one, you need to have more and more spread. And so uh, 15 uh, is, is pretty much the estimate of what you would need here. So each provider can obviously do this themselves. Um, I have these, uh, uh, these two, uh, uh, this concept here called session slots. Basically, if you have this many nodes, uh, how many, you know, sessions can these nodes be in across different chains? And so because max chains is eight, it's basically 3000 times eight. Uh, and you get, uh, you know, the amount of session slots that you have to fill. Um, ultimately, I, I won't get too uh, uh, 
uh, I, I won't get things too carried away, but what you have here is, let me go ahead and take this guy out of here. Um, what I made this is I've made this super dynamic. So a provider can literally start coming down and start filling in how many nodes of their nodes do they wanna assign to a given chain. So uh, for Polygon, it's, hey, uh, I wanna put all my nodes on Polygon, uh, which will give me 25% of that chain. Uh, I wanna put all my nodes on uh, uh, you know, base, uh, Ethereum, scroll, what have you. Uh, and once you hit a, uh, once 95% of your nodes are assigned, then your column will turn green. And that basically means, hey, you have, a, you know, you've assigned enough of your nodes that, uh, you know, people have a pretty good idea of, you know, where, uh, you know, how full a chain is going to be uh, and, you know, how dis distributed you are. Um, as a as a provider starts filling this in, what you have over here is you have the uh, uh, you'll have the number of available nodes change. Now, because this is an example, it doesn't uh, it doesn't actually change. But over here, if I come to Coder and I say, "Hey, I'm going to put 2,000 on Scroll," you can see that uh, 2,000 is taken away from the amount of nodes that are supposed to be on that chain uh, to the amount of nodes that can now uh, be on that chain. So if basically, if so many people are uh, coming on to Solana, which probably isn't going to happen, but if you have a lot of people joining Solana and it becomes over, uh, uh, you'll be able to see here if, uh, if it's over-provisioned. And if it's over-provisioned, obviously you're going to be hitting, you're going to be receiving less rewards uh, because ultimately anyone wants to be on either a balanced uh, chain uh or they want it to be uh uh under provision meaning there's not uh meaning there's a high amount of available nodes still on that chain so uh so anyways if, if someone like coder let me just go ahead and copy these guys if someone like coder came over here and uh uh you know filled in all of his nodes you can see that the available nodes on all these chains are you know reduced much more right and so let's take uh, let's take something like uh, uh, Ethereum archival, right? So then, if Pocket Scan uh, comes over and it's like, hey, I'm going to put you know two thousand nodes on Pocket Scan, uh, or from Pocket Scan on ETH archival, well, now you are taking fifty seven percent of that chain, and at least right now, I mean, the goal is to have uh, no one have a majority on any given chain, so. Uh, so it'd be better to, you know, maybe go 1500, right? But that means between these two providers, there are only 150, you know, nodes available. So then say someone comes over here and say, uh, you know, Nodes is like, well, hey, I want to put 1500 on that. Well, now it's under provisioned or over provisioned. You now have nine, 900 more nodes than what should be on it. Um, and so this gives a way for people to see what chains, depending on what providers want to uh, stake on each chain, um, an idea of where they should put their distribution, like where they should put their nodes. Because uh, if, if Coder and Pocket Scan are already going to be putting, you know, a lot of chain, uh, a lot of nodes on this chain, um, if you're betting to put, you know, 1500 on, on that chain as well, uh, you're just going to be asking for less rewards. Now, we could just let the market figure this out, right? We could just not have this spreadsheet and no one fill it out and everyone just have to figure it out in real time. Um, but I at least created the spreadsheet so people could coordinate if they want to. I know some providers have legitimately asked me, hey, is there a way to coordinate? Uh, because they don't want to have to figure this out, uh, you know, just in real time, having everyone switching chains and everyone's trying to figure out how to balance. This could at least literally give everyone a pretty good idea on how you know, by communicating, hey, these are the chains I'm going to be on, then other providers could literally focus on other chains and they don't have to uh, duplicate work. Because if too many providers suddenly want to do Ethereum archival, um, that will create, uh, and then they realize, oh, well, because there's so many people on Ethereum archival, let me change to near. Well, Gandalf has already happened. So now you're having to, you know, uh, backtrack on a chain that you were expecting to serve, and now you have to switch to a completely other chain, which means you have to, you know, 
likely uh, spin up new uh, infrastructure and everything like that for that new chain. So anyways, it, it, if we let everything happen just in the market, uh, just, hey, we're just going to change this and node runners have to, uh, uh, you know, do this on their own, then it could be kind of chaotic. People will likely be way over-provisioned on some chains, way under-provisioned on some chains, and uh, there would be just a lot more headache that providers will have to go to to get to balance. Um, so my goal with this was to at least allow a way if, if uh, uh, providers want to communicate uh, and want to coordinate, they could absolutely coordinate here by filling in what they want to, uh, what chains they want to serve. And then other providers can see which which chains are covered and which chains are not. And then they can focus on the ones that are not. Uh, and it just makes things a lot simpler in the long run. But it's up to providers if they want to utilize this. If everyone wants to keep it secret what chains they're going to serve, um, then basically everyone will just be in the same boat of uh, figuring it out you know, in real time and uh, uh, people's rewards, you know, their customer rewards could be low because if too many providers all ate into uh, a specific chain um, that creates an imbalance, then, uh, you know, that's kind of on them. So, anywho, that's that's kind of the uh, spreadsheet and how to use it. Um, so, yeah, open to any questions or anything that people have about, you know, the spreadsheet or Gandalf in general. I don't know if we're uh, actually still on track with uh, some of our open office hours calls and builders calls and things along that line that have been on the calendar previously. Um, do you have any plans on maybe hosting some working groups around this to answer questions from node runners uh, during this process? I mean, sure. If, if you know, if they want it. Uh, I mean, I, I basically put this all on the forum, right? Uh, made this resource available to everyone. Um, I haven't gotten any uh, responses from it uh, or anything like that. Um, no one's filled out anything either. So it, I, I don't want to waste my time. If, if, if people don't want to kind of like coordinate on this, then that's perfectly fine. Um, but if people want to kind of walk through this, if we want to set up a community call where, you know, all the providers kind of work together on filling this out, Fantastic. I'm happy to organize that. Um, I'm just kind of rolling with the punches. I'm not going to waste my time trying to uh, herd kittens if, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if, if providers don't want to actually kind of coordinate together. If they do want to coordinate together, which I think would just simplify everyone's jobs, uh, then this would be the way to do it. And I'm happy to set something up so that it could actually be done possibly in lifetime. Awesome. We really appreciate that. I know that uh, there are a number of smaller node runners on this call. I see Ian and Jeff and uh, a few other folks. Um, I think especially for independents, that might be a useful working group. But uh, if that is something that y'all are interested in, please uh, head on over and drop some comments on the forum. That way Shane has a way to gauge some interest and uh, we can coordinate around that as needed. Any other questions for Shane? Yeah, seems like not. So awesome. Appreciate you, Shane. And uh, uh, that, that spreadsheet looks like a hell of a useful resource to me. So I'm hoping that people do uh, take the, the opportunity to use that. I see Fred from Grove is typing, so we'll uh, eyeball that. Um, this is uh, the open floor section of the call, so at any point in time, um, please feel free to come off mute and uh, ask a question, make a statement, uh, anything else along that line you like. Also, you are welcome to uh, type questions or comments in the uh, sidebar chat if you like, and uh, I'll read those out as needed.
<laughs> Good morning. We're so back. I'm with you, Crypto Do. It's really nice to see a, a focus on things other than governance in the moment. Watching a, a Voitex a, a multi-chain strategy like being launched in real time and, and seeing all the work that's going into that, seeing Gandalf coming into play, um, all of those things help add some optimism uh, and, and uh, you know, something to look forward to uh, for the, the near-term future. For anyone who is interested in helping uh, create content and boost around uh, the... Uh, sorry, who was that? Oh, McGarvey? You got to be muted when you're not talking, mate. Uh, at any rate, we do have uh, the Pactopus Party or Pactopus Army Discord, uh, where we are doing a lot of the coordination around marketing plans and such for uh, the multi-chain strategy. So feel free to DM me if you'd like an invite there. Other thoughts, questions? Happy as always to give some spare time uh, back to your lives. I see Sloppy Joe is talking or chatting. Uh, Sloppy Joe, is community chains still something we should use? I mean, you can use it. Um, it's still uh, it's still operational. Um, so, yeah, uh, any you know anyone running their own nodes could uh, you know utilize community chains as a way to add uh, you know add chains that they can serve without having to spin up the infrastructure themselves. Um, yeah, that's still a viable option if. People are running their own nodes, and uh, uh, yeah, always happy to provide um, yeah provide support and stuff like that uh, in the NodePilot Discord. Uh, we we help people over there uh, if yeah if they have any needs or anything with community chains. But yeah, still still in use if you want to use it. Is there anything that will need to change if you're using community chains? Um... There's not anything different in config with uh, with the Gandalf changes, right? Well, you would still need to reduce the amount of chains that your node is staked to to right. to the correct number. So you would still so if you're serving uh, if you're staked to 15 chains, then you'd need to reduce that to obviously eight. Um, uh, because I believe how it is, uh, and and maybe. If, if someone on protocol, Oshansky, maybe you know the answer to this. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you don't have, uh, if you have more than uh, the expected number, you just won't be in sessions anymore. So if it's 15, if you're staked to 15, once the change happens on the 19th, uh, your node will no longer be in sessions. Uh, I believe that's how it is. It, does that sound right to you, Oshansky? In part, yes, uh, but there are a lot of complexity. So the TLD, TLDR answer to that is yes. OK. So yeah, so anyone, so basically any node that's grandfathered in, meaning they, they, they you know, keep their same stake, uh, they just won't be in sessions. So they obviously won't get any traffic. Because um, what the network does is at the beginning of a session is it checks to make sure, hey, do you have, you know, uh, the right amount and not more of whatever the parameter is right now. So once it's eight, then everyone needs to be on eight in order to be in a session. And if you're on 15 still, you're not going to be on, uh, uh, you're not going to be in sessions. So 
everyone will have to end up restaking. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll need to make that announcement kind of clear, especially as we get closer to the, uh, uh, to the 19th. But, um, you know, it, it, for most folks, it would make sense to, you know, just change the amount of, uh, 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 the amount of chains that they're serving uh, in their nodes, just do it before. You don't have to do it right on the on the nodes, right on the dot. So <laughs> it would probably be better to have, uh, especially if people have a large amount of nodes, they're going to have to do staking transactions for every single node. Um, so it definitely makes sense for people to to get on it early. Uh, and, you know, I, I just expect over the weekend people could, you know, do batches of of nodes, especially if they run a lot of, a lot of nodes. Uh, just kind of do batches of nodes so that um, the chain isn't overwhelmed with uh, tons of staking transaction changes. Um, but anyways, uh, so people will have to restake. Is the are you uh, are you tracking uh, community chain usage in regards to like you know how many are staked across which chains? Uh, no, but there isn't a lot of. Uh, uh, there, there, there's, there's just a few independent node runners that use it. Gotcha. So it, it's, it, yeah. So the, the amount of nodes on community chains is, is very small. So it wouldn't have any. Uh, so that kind of, that user base would have no effect on, you know, uh, chain balance because it really what's going to come down to is the ones with lots of nodes. They're going to be the ones that are going to have to move nodes from, you know, one chain to another chain. Right. So if uh, an independent node runner has, you know, three pocket nodes and they put those three pocket nodes on uh, something like Ethereum archival, as we were talking about earlier, um, you know, the, the big provider, uh, they're they're more incentivized because they already have nodes across, you know, eight, 15 or whatever different chains. They can just change the stake of, you know, a few of their nodes uh, if, you know, if if the imbalance starts to affect their rewards, they're incentivized to, you know, distribute their nodes uh, from one chain to another chain. So the providers that are multi-chain, right, that are across multiple nodes uh, or multiple chains, they're likely going to be the ones kind of providing balance for the rest of the network uh, because they have a lot of responsibility because they're running a lot of nodes. Um, the independent people, um, they will most likely just be able to just kind of stick on a chain and uh, providers themselves are more incentivized to get off over provision chains. So if uh, a provider has, you know, uh, 50 nodes on one chain and, uh, you know, five nodes from, uh, you know, a little guy joins, um, they could easily move five nodes from uh, their 50 nodes uh, or, or move 50 nodes from this chain uh, or five nodes, sorry, move five nodes from that small chain to a different chain really easily uh, to maximize their rewards. So uh, so likely what will happen is the large providers will kind of be the ones shuffling nodes around. Uh, and part of this is they're going to have to kind of figure out the algorithms or the kind of tools that they want in, in order to be able to do this efficiently. But the providers that are able to find the best balance will likely be the ones that generate the most reward, especially in Shannon. Um, because Shannon really highly prioritizes balance of the network to maximize uh, return, um, to maximize reward. So if people are inside Morse are figuring out how to properly, you know, balance their nodes across uh, across chains now, uh, that would actually benefit them greatly for what is coming in Shannon and kind of uh, the incentives that are built into Shannon. Or that makes sense. Any other thoughts or questions about that to close things out? Okay. Well, in that case, uh, we'll see you all, all again, same time, same channel next week. Thanks, everybody.